everybody welcome to today's video we're going to be talking about a highly controversial investment strategy this is not for everybody i want to make a warning right away if you are here today to talk about how do i invest in an rsp or how do i invest in a tax-free savings account this is not what we're going to be talking about it's a very highly controversial and, and i think when i begin to start talking about it you'll understand why it's controversial but when i actually get you to think about it at different way you'll see it's not so controversial after all in fact a lot of people are doing it just in a slightly different way already so let's get into this you're gonna love this you are let me set this up for you you are let's say my age you're 50 plus um, so you're or you're beginning to be in retirement getting close to being in retirement and you want an investment strategy where you know you're going to be able to have either zero or very little market fluctuation, zero or very little market risk, and have a predetermined amount of money that's going to be available to you tax-free. Now we're getting closer to what this could be. You, who is this for? So you may have maxed out or you should have maxed out your RSPs. You've maxed out your tax-free savings account. You're a high income earning, earner and you have good savings already. A, you might even have a sizable pension plan that's gonna be available to you in retirement. If you're self-employed, you might be paying yourself a combination of salary and dividend salary so that you can build up some RSP room and you can build up your um, Canada pension plan and village security. And obviously you've maxed out your tax-free savings account. So this is somebody, you know, you, you've, you've already exhausted other types of investment um, accounts and you're, you have extra money. Um, and so you're wondering like, what do I do with the extra money? Well, here's what you can do. Let's say you have a, um, a parent that is still relatively young or an aunt or an uncle, reasonably young, say 60 years of age, uh, and you might be 40 something, and your parents are 60 or 70 years of age, maximum 80, you don't wanna go beyond that. And they're in reasonably decent health, and um, there's no like medical underlying conditions, no cancer, heart attacks, strokes, no major illnesses or diseases with them. What you're going to do is you're going to take out a permanent life insurance policy. Now, I know you're like, wait, I'm not watching this video anymore. <laughs> but I want you to just hear this out. It's not going to be a long video. But you have to understand this strategy. People actually do this strategy already, and you do it in a different way. And there's just it's a slightly variation on what people are doing already. You're going to take out a permanent life insurance policy on your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, family member, basically. And you're going to pay into that life insurance policy. Let's say, for example, you paid $15,000 a year into that life insurance policy for your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, whatever. And you're going to pay that as long as they're living. Now, you don't have to. You could pay it for a certain period of time. I'm going to show you an illustration that's exactly share with you what happens and why you would want to do this. And bear in mind, the reason why you might be doing this is because, like, this is kind of like an, an alternative to an RSP, a TFSA. Not really. We're presuming that you have filled up all of your eligible space in your RSPs, in your tax-free savings accounts, and you have this amount of money now that is a surplus. So consider the person, if you are making, let's say, $200,000 a year, you've done your max contribution to your RSP, You've done your max contribution at tax-free savings account. You have no unused contribution room in either of those two accounts. And you have extra money sitting. Like you've got $140,000 after tax sitting um, in cash. And you're going to use that some way. Some of it obviously is used for your lifestyle. But I want you to think you're a high income earner, as what I've said before. And you're being taxed heavily on those dollars that you invest in a non-registered account. If you're a business owner, I mean, you've got a passive income tax issue. You've got money that's sitting in either a holding company or operating company. I've talked before. I'll link up here to the videos that talk about you might be offside to use your lifetime capital gains exemption because you have too much money in your holding account, holding company, or your 
um, operating company that's uh, making you ineligible. So you're really trying to think about how do I use my money in a way that I'm not being crushed on uh, taxation and not making myself ineligible to use lifetime capital gains exemption. Well, the, the alternative here, and it's very creative, is putting a life insurance policy in place for your parent, your mom, mom and dad, uncle or aunt, that kind of thing. And if you do that, you completely eliminate this idea of market fluctuations, market volatility, taxation. It's an awesome strategy. So let's talk about this. You're middle age, you're, you're like 40-ish, and your parents are 60 to 70 years of age, and they're in like pretty decent health, right? This is really important because obviously if they're not of good health, you can't really put insurance on them. And what you're thinking about, I know this sounds morbid. This is the controversy behind it. It's a morbid thought. People are thinking, why do I want to benefit off of the passing of my parents? And the reality is you do already. It's called an inheritance. Your parents have life, in hopefully they have life insurance policies. If they're working with me and we're doing estate planning, I try to make sure that you have life insurance that's going to pay for the estate taxes and then also take care of any legacy goals you might have. So if you're doing financial planning and you're doing it well and you've got capital, you're going to have life insurance because it is one of the easiest, cheapest ways to be able to provide so many different solutions in one product. It's amazing. So your parents are already going to provide to you an inheritance. That inheritance is going to come either through life insurance that they own already, through the sale of assets um, or the transfer of assets to you. So you're receiving um, an inheritance. In this case, you have a, a parent that may not have the capital to afford life insurance. If they did have the capital, they would like to buy insurance so that they can provide a bigger estate to their children. But you are in a great position in that, that you're doing well for yourself. So you say, hey, mom and dad, you know what? I'll just pay for the insurance. Now, where do you see this? It's very commonly used when parents have a cottage that they bought for twenty or $30,000. And 30, 40 years later, it's worth a million, two million, three million dollars. And now they want to give this cottage to the kids and the only way to give it to the kids is if they have to sell other assets to pay the capital gains that would be used to, um, to pay off Revenue Canada or to have some cash that's sitting there that would pay the tax bill to be able to pass the cottage to you and have it without any liabilities. Or they have life insurance that will pay the tax bill so that you can receive the cottage on a, a tax-free basis. So you understand today children, adult children, will get together and they'll start to collectively, like two or three kids, right, adult children, and they'll pay the life insurance premium so that the death benefit on their parents pays the estate taxes so that they can inherit the assets free and clear. You understand that is a normal strategy. Go and Google it. How do I get the cottage or how to, how to transfer the cottage to your children? Google that kind of strategy. You're going to see it all over the place using life insurance to do that. So this is really no different. The only difference is that you're saying, hey, mom and dad, we can increase. Um, your, I want to make more money for my own um, retirement goals by increasing the inheritance that I'm going to receive from you. And I'm, going to, I'm willing to pay for the insurance. That is really um, the whole basis behind this and some people find that a little morbid and other people say it's no different than us paying for insurance to pay off the tax liability so that we can get the cottage and apartment buildings or a condo in Florida or whatever there's no difference in that regard so it's really about estate planning here and maximizing the estate of your family so that you have more money in retirement and so if you're cool with that, watch the rest of this because you're going to like what you what you see. If you're kind of uneasy about it, watch it anyway. It's interesting. But I'd like to hear your comments about it. Just understand that it's not for everybody because you have to have the capital to do it. You have to be comfortable with this kind of strategy, not thinking that you're, you're taking advantage on the, the passing of your parents. This is really about estate planning. Your parents would have bought the insurance if they could have afforded it anyway. So it's really 
about you sheltering money inside of a life insurance policy that is on your parents, your uncle, your aunt, and you're putting money into the insurance policy so that it can grow on a tax deferred basis because money in a whole life or participating life insurance policy receives a dividend on an annual basis. And that dividend is non-taxable as long as it's held inside of the life insurance policy. Watch these videos above here where you're going to be able to see how you can access cash values so that you can use that to supplement your retirement. And so it's a very common thing. So you've already used up all this space that you could use in an RSP in a tax-free savings account. So you have no other place to put money that is tax deferred or tax sheltered other than life insurance. If you even if you have a corporation, you say I'll put it in a in an account owned by the corporation, so it's not taxed to me personally, but your your corporation is being taxed on a passive income rate, which is above 50%. So that's not really helpful to you as well. So this is why this is probably an alternative for you to be able to use um, to grow the amount of money that you're going to use in retirement. Now, you just have to bear in mind, again, you need the capital, you need the good income, you should have used all of your other accounts first, and your parents or uncles or aunts or something have to be healthy. So what I'm going to share with you now is uh, basically the sort of illustrations and sort of the synopsis of how we do this. So let's say Robert, the son of, uh, of the two parents, the son, he's 41 years of age, and Robert's doing well. He makes $200,000 a year. I'm not going to get into whether that's a personal income or whether that's a, he's in, uh, has a business. If it's a business, even better, because then you can um, take money from the corporation to fund this. But we're just going to say there's a $200,000 taxable income no more room in the RSPs, no more room in the tax-free savings account. And he's got about $150,000 in a non-registered asset. So he's, he's already accumulated assets in a non-registered account. And he's looking at the taxation of that saying, I don't want to create another uh, pool of money that's just going to be heavily taxed. Where else can I use tax deferral? And they say, okay, you know what? Let's put it inside of life insurance. Sarah, Robert's mother, is 70 years of age, 70, 70 years of age, reasonably good um, health, maybe taking prescriptions for like cholesterol or high blood pressure, which shouldn't really uh, affect the insurance, maybe has a bad knee or bad hip. Again, that's not going to affect the life insurance. And so she's in de decent health. So you take out the insurance. Have a look at this illustration here. This is comparing a traditional investment that's called an alternative investment on the left hand side against the life insurance on the right hand side. So you are depositing $15,000 in the first year and that $15,000 at the end of the year if Sarah was to pass away would net you after tax $15,546. It's assuming a 7% rate of return whereas in the life insurance the death benefit would be $261,000. So that's a 1,600% rate of return. Now, I know we're saying rate of return on your parent or, or uncle or aunt. I'm just relating it to the way an investment works. Obviously, you don't want your parents to die young. I'm just sharing with you how insurance works. So if you're to deposit, what this is saying is if you're to deposit $15,000 a year, as long as your parents are living, and in any one of those years, it's saying what is the death benefit compared to the cash value, after-tax cash value of an investment portfolio getting 7% rate of return. So you can see at 75, there's $83,000 versus $280,000. At age 80, there's $183,000 in investment account versus $318,000 in investment account. So you can see the, the value of using life insurance in this situation is that the money is being invested in a tax deferred, and I say tax-free, tax-deferred, meaning as long as you're not taking the money in your hand, that dividend that you get from the insurance company, because that would be a taxable event. But you could actually withdraw from this. You could collateralize it, take it to the bank, and use um, a loan. So a loan against the value is called a cash surrender value, CSV line of credit. Very common for business owners and people to use this during retirement to supplement their income. But if what we're really talking about is on death, on death, the 300 at age 80, $318,000 comes tax-free 
to the beneficiaries. Now, if a parent was to do this, usually they're very pleased to do it because they know that the money is going to be going to their um, children and their grandchildren. And if a parent didn't have enough capital to do this, but the children had enough capital to do this, the likelihood that they would agree if they're healthy is very strong because they understand that it's going to maximize the amount of money going to their grandchildren and children so that they can have a better life. And it's a smart investment. It's it, it I know there's a sense of uneasiness about it, like maybe you think it's a morbid kind of uh, strategy, but parents do it. I want to reiterate, they do this already. They The only difference is that you're paying for it on behalf of your parents instead of they had the capital to do this. And there's a lot of, wow, in, in the business I've been in in over 20 years, there's a lot of seniors that, you know, they they living on CPP and old age security. They don't have a lot of capital, but their kids, they did everything they could to make sure that their kids got a great education and got a fantastic career going. They're making a lot of money. Maybe they're even living with the, the uh, children now and their children are making a lot of money, but they themselves don't have a lot of money. And so the, the it's just a great uh, alternative investment for you to use, uh, for the kids to use to say, here, here's the money, let's get insurance. It's a very simple strategy. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not a long video, but I wanted to share with you something that was different, controversial for some people and not for others, and just a very different kind of thing. And to help you to get over this idea of how you can use life insurance to grow generationally your family's wealth. It's a simple thing to do. And if parents, if you talk to your parents about it, they don't have money, but you do. And just say, how would you feel about if I paid for the insurance on the two of you or one of you? Would you be comfortable with that? And just float it, have a conversation. And I bet you'd be surprised by the answer because they want to make sure that you're going to have a better life than they did. And having more money doesn't make you a better person, just gives you better choices. Hope you're doing well. I always say to you, we take care of your wealth management so you can take care of what's most important to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Very short video, very useful subject. I look forward to seeing you on other videos. If you like this content, again, please hit that subscribe button, like and share the video with everyone that uh, needs to hear this. I want to hear your comments about it, whether you think this is like totally offside, this is a terrible subject, why did you talk about this? Um, and I, I, or maybe you're saying this is ingenious. I hadn't even considered that possibility. I want to hear from you. Hope you're doing well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much. Take care.